come to praise thy name, O Lord. For your name is worthy to be praised. How many found that God is worthy to be praised? Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, give God a good hand clap if you love him. Amen. As you look around, we can tell that the holiday season fever is still alive. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, don't forget to celebrate Christ. Amen. A lot of folk are missing because they're celebrating. Amen. The holidays on today. But we must learn to keep Christ in the season. Somebody say, Christ in the season. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not talking about Christ is. I'm talking about Christ in the season. A lot of times when we celebrate, amen, Christmas and going into the new year, you'll be surprised at how many people are depressed and feel like giving up and seem like life is over. It's a high suicide rate. Got a call on the other day, amen, that, amen, someone in one of the relatives committed suicide there in Virginia. So don't think that it's lightly. You, this is a time when we got to pray. Amen. We had such an awesome time. Amen. In New Bern. Amen. So glad to have at least one of y'all to come. Amen. To represent God of deliverance. But we had an awesome time. Amen. Leaders learn to get in place. Whenever we have something corporate going on, it is important that leaders are presented even if the church doesn't come. And I'm finding out this year in 2020, if you don't feel like you want to be a real leader, please sit down because we need to have, amen, corporate understanding of the move of God. Amen. If you are too busy to be in place, please come and see me and we won't be mad. We just understand you don't have time, but there should not be a time when the leader goes out and he's represented by himself. Amen. Unless you're working, we understand. But amen, you ain't got to pray and see if that's the will of God for you to be in place. If you are a leader, you ought to be in place. No question about it. And if that's too beneath you, please turn your papers in and move on or sit out in the pew and enjoy the service. Amen. It's tough, but we are coming into a new knowledge that it's important for us to be on the same page. Amen. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. As we go into 2020, we got to understand the meaning of a sacrifice. It was a sacrifice for me to go, amen, down to New Bern on my birthday. Amen. It was a sacrifice for me to get up early in the morning and go down there to New Bern for prayer. But because the leader said that he would like for us to be in place, it had nothing to do with my birthday. It had everything to do with my commitment. We've got to be committed to what God has. If God has called you to God of deliverance, you ought to be faithful. Amen. If you called yourself to the ministry, then you could be lackadaisical and opinionated and all those kind of things. But you have to look at this as sacred. And the more and more as we're getting closer to the return of Christ, the more and more there's a great falling away, a falling away from the church, a falling away from commitment, of falling away from diligence, but it requires sacrifice. Not only that, amen, realizing, amen, as we got back, amen, uh, on Saturday, had to turn around and go to the prisons on this morning. My flesh didn't want to go. My flesh wanted to stay home, tired. And then I heard the Lord say, sacrifice. Son, it's about sacrifice. You got to get out of the comfort zone. And realize that if you're going to do the things that are going to empower people's lives, you have to become a living sacrifice. Amen. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Every one of us are called to be leaders. Amen. Every one of us. You have to see the value in your call. I see the value in my call. I can be lackadaisical. I can be nonchalant. I can get frustrated and aggravated and feel like giving up. But the call is too important. It requires a sacrifice. 
Amen. And if you don't understand sacrifice, you'll never become what all God has ordained and called you to be. Amen. I was reading, amen, a little uh, 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 note up there that uh, Tiny had put up on Facebook. And, 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 and uh, she, she made reference that it was a joke. But I sent back a message and I said, that joke I got a revelation out of. I'm trying to find it, but I can't seem to find it right now. But, but the thing is that she was saying in the joke that in 19... 19, 2019, one thing, 2018, one thing, 2017, one thing. And she said the plan was started in 2016. And when I looked at it, I said, wow. And I began to say to myself, that's a great revelation of persistence. You might not get what you want when you want it, but don't give up pursuing it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We got to get to a place that we might not have everything that we want, and it may not look like it's all coming together, but we got to keep on chasing after it. We got to keep on moving forward. And that's my thought on today. You got to keep moving forward. Look at three people around you and say, you got to keep moving forward. You got to keep moving forward. So many things that come to hinder. There's so many things that come to stop your forward progress. I believe it's Psalms 140 verse 4. How it says that the wicked man comes to prevent our goings. Amen. There's a wicked man that don't want you be, to be committed. There's a wicked man that don't want you to be focused. There's a wicked man that wants to destroy your future. There's a wicked man that doesn't believe that you can become all that God has called you to be. There's a wicked man that stands, amen, in front of your success. There's a wicked man that stands in front of your power. There's a wicked man that stands in front of your joy. But I believe that when God calls you, you are willing to do anything and everything that God has inquired you to to do empowered you to do I believe that I believe that no weapon formed against you can prosper I believe that you are to be everything that God has called you to be but you have to realize that you and I have an enemy that won't won't allow us to do what God has called us to do and that's why we got to resist that devil you got to have resisting power and the closer as the years Mount up, you have to get that much stronger in your commitment. The world, I'm talking to somebody. You got to realize the world is getting stronger and stronger, invading the church. Darkness is moving and invading the church. But we've got to become the light. We must become the light. When people look at us, they ought to see the glory and the power and the anointing of Christ in our lives. Huh? Come on, somebody. We've got to realize that God has called me. Come on, tell your neighbor, God has called me. And if God has called you, where are the signs? Where is the signs? Come on, there ought to be a sign. There ought to be something different about you. Because why God got his hands on you? Not about trying to entertain. I, 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 I was telling them at the prison today. I said, they said, Pastor, we enjoy no musicians available, no, none of that. But just getting the word and being empowered. We're not here to entertain. Listen, who, I, wish I, could, oh, I wish I could do all that. That's fine in its place. But make sure you get the word of God. Make sure you get the power of God. Make sure you have the grace of God upon your life. These things are important. And the church is not to become an entertainment center. Folks will join the church because the choir sings nice, because the music sounds great, because the children are dancing, because the mime is doing great. This is not an entertainment center. Our souls are at stake. Are y'all listening to me? I didn't come in here with this on my mind. But God is talking to us. We're going year after year after year, and there's no deepening of our commitment. And yet God is saying, I'm waiting for a servant. I'm waiting for my servants to rise and to show the world that I got somebody committed. That I got somebody standing strong. I got somebody that can go through a whirlwind and come out with victory. I, got, I, got, I need somebody that can stand in the flames of hell. And when I bring them out, there's no smoke, no damage to their garments. God says I need somebody. 
I'm preaching better than you look. <laughs> We're into this emotional high. Don't get me wrong. I love to be high in the Holy Ghost. I love to shout and praise the Lord. I love to come out and see folks falling and lifting their hands and glorifying God. But when it's all over, uh, when the songs die down, is there still some sign of a commitment? Is there still a standard in your life? Or are you just going along with the party? People singing in the choir and shacking at the same time. Laying up at the same time. Cussing and fussing at the same time. And people getting mad with somebody who said that it's wrong. It's wrong. If you're not going to live the life, stop singing. If you're not going to live the life, stop playing. If you're not going to live the life, stop preaching. But we got to get back to the old landmark. We got to get back to where holiness means something in the church. We got to get back to talking about sin and not be afraid of losing folk. I wish I could talk to somebody. It's become such a strong entertainment that folk run from the truth anymore. There's compromising on every side. But as the time draw nigh, narrow is the way. I heard the Bible said narrow is the way that leads to life. But we got to get back to a standard. We got to get back to holding up the bloodstained banner. Whose blood will be required at your hand? Because you have lowered the standard and began to compromise. Don't worry about just a preacher. You members, amen, you, you servants of God got an accountability because there's people a sign to you that you might not even know nothing about. And yet when they look at you, what do they see? What do, when they look at you, do they say they can do the same thing you do? I told someone, amen, about a minister and they could not believe on their job. They could not believe that they were a minister. What are you showing them on the job? Huh? What are you showing them? But you cool like everybody else. Tell, tell dirty jokes and laugh at all that craziness. Every time you turn around, you take pictures with them, but you're not taking no pictures with the saints. Something wrong with that. That's telling somebody something. We got to get back. I give God a hand clap. That's my first thing. I came out here with an exciting message. Came out here to be able to, amen, stir your fire. But we got to get back to living right. I wish I had some agreement in the building. We got to get back to living right. Can I get some praise in here? We got to get back to living right. Are you going to leave me all by myself? We got to get back to living right. Do I got anybody in here that wants to live right so that God can get the glory and the honor out of our vessels? Our time is short. Time is short. We got to get back to living right. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Stop deceiving. Stop laying up with somebody else's wife or husband. Talk, everybody want to focus in on, on, on the LBGOs and all, all the alphabets. But what about that liar? What, what about that, that whoremonger? Huh? Deceivers. We, God, God, it's a whole list of sins. But let me tell you something. Thank God for grace and mercy that he allows us to be able to come to him and ask for forgiveness and give us another chance. But it don't mean go back and keep doing the same thing. And as I'll say to the day I leave the planet, this place is holy. The pulpit area is holy. The organ is holy. The drums is holy. The choir stand is holy. These are holy things that we're messing with. And you just can't do what you want to do when you want to do and how you want to do. Preacher was saying, talking to me. He said, hey, man. He said, man, they had great church. He said, but, and I, I said, but they ain't living a nickel worth of dog meat. So all they are is great entertainers. God ain't looking for entertainers. He's looking for servants. He's looking at somebody 
that he can use to tell the world, I got people that's living what I called them to. Are you the one or do we look for another? I know it ain't a good message. I, I know I might be racking your nerve. That's all right. Every now and then you need your nerves messed up to keep us focused, to challenge us, iron sharpened as iron. Got to stop being so lackadaisical about the things of God. People say, oh, uh, uh, Pastor, you hard. I said, no, I, I, I'm looking at the word. And when that word stands in front of you and challenges you to change, do you change or do you make the word change? Huh? Many people are trying to change the word, the word of God. Because they don't want to live what God called. Don't worry about coming to God or delivering. God or delivering? No, they trying to live right. It's all right. We got to play the piccolo. We got to beat our hands and get the tambourines. And we got to be, hey man, it, it's not about the crowd. God might have called me to lead three people into heaven. You weren't about thousands. And God said, I assigned you to three. If Jesus had 12, I'm, I'm still within the category. <laughs> I'm still within the category. Don't get it twisted. I love to have a big ministry. I love to have a great crowd, but most of all, I love to ha see a person that, amen, I can see them go through the growth spurts of God and see them now change and become women and men of God that, amen, I'm not ashamed to say, that's one I can use. That's one I can depend on. That's the one. Oh, God, I wish I had some help in here. And so whatever God is saying to somebody in here, because I said again, this wasn't my message. But you as leaders ought to be leaders. You're going to be a leader. You're going to have a title. You ought to, you ought to be the, the, the cream of the crop. Come on, some, oh, come on somebody. You ought, to be, you ought to be the cream of the crop. Ought not to be begging you, not priming you and, and wondering if you're going to show up. Wonder, no, no. If you're a leader, you ought to ex. Oh, God. If I'm getting frustrated, I know God's sick of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strong. You got to pull this stuff down. All of us got flesh. And you understand ain't none of us on top of nobody. We all trying to get in here. Just because I'm preaching this way to you, I'm preaching to me too. I'm not trying to act like I'm on the, on the throne higher than you. Brother, pray for me. Sister, pray for me. Because I'm sure praying for you. Wouldn't you. Don't you know one of the greatest things the enemy wants is to see you fail? Don't you know that? Huh? Don't you know that? Want you to fail. Want you to be, amen, a, a, a Samson? Well, where's, where, where's your weakness? Where, 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 what can we do to make you uh, 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 just like everybody else? Let sin reign in your life and call yourself a preacher. Huh? Call yourself an evangelist. Call yourself an elder and a deacon. And you laying up with folk and you cussing and fussing. There's a sinner laugh at you. They might not even tell you. They say you're a joke. Because there ain't nothing to you. We got to stop. We, we got to get back in, to the old landmark. I'm talking to you for a few minutes before I preach this word. But you got to understand something. I, I, I asked God, I said, God, why is the pulpit area so polluted? Why is it so polluted? Because most people are so caught up in the entertainment, they're disregarding the lifestyle. And God began to deal with my heart. He said, one thing you got to understand is that children didn't occupy holy places. Let me say it again because that might have went over your head. He said, children never occupied holy places. 
You weren't allowed to do anything, amen, far as sacred until you at least were 30 years old. And so we are so busy trying to encourage young people, and young people are gifted, and they get in the pulpit, and they do all the things of what is required far as talent, but their lifestyle. Because the foolishness has not yet been delivered, and many of them don't really have a relationship. Oh, I know this ain't talking. Because the handle sacred things pertaining to God was in the time frame of 30 to 50. Because they believed that the junk would be out of your life. pulpit has become so polluted because we're too busy trying to encourage. We're too busy smi- uh, uh, winking when God said, I- I'm no longer winking. <sighs> He's not winking, winking at those things being in the pulpit, being in the choir, being in the musician. We're supposed to represent the cream of the crop. Are we, are we more holier than anybody else? No, but our, our commitment and our sacrifice and our diligence is greater. If I weep, if I sin, I weep like a dove who has fell in the mud. Sin is not something that you walk the streets and say it's okay. When a dove falls in the mud, he doesn't act like a pig. A pig will roll around in the mud and enjoy the mud. But a dove will fall in the mud and you will hear the dove cry because it represents that it wants to be clean. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? I want to be clean. My desire is God. I want to be clean. I want to be able to stand with no conviction of sin and stand before your people as holy as I can be because I don't want to sin and bring shame to your name. Living right is not just for the preacher. It's for everyone who claims the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody. Everybody. Well, Pastor, your your church ain't growing. Yeah, it is. You can't see what God is doing in the lives of the people that we have. I wish I had some help just then. I uh, see so you worrying about big crowds. I'm worrying about quality. I can take a licking and keep on ticking. Lose children and keep on praising God. Go through hell and divorce and keep on praising God. Life ain't been fair. Cancer come and try to take parts of your body, but we keep on praising God. Why? Because it's not amen for show. I got a soul invested in this. Look at your neighbor and say, the pastor ain't mad. He's just preaching hard. We got to get our commitments together. They're trying to push me into another level of leadership, and I told them no. And I made no, amen, important, because when I look around and see what I got, I don't feel like we qualify. Because you're only as good as a leader with the people that you have around you. You got to have leaders that want to have their leader looking good all the time. Never to leave them in shame and dishonor. David's men said, listen, when he heard the heartbeat of their leader saying, I I desire just water from Jerusalem. Or Bethlehem. I don't know which one. I can't be too stirred up. But they put their lives in jeopardy. Why? Because they loved their leader. They honored what he spoke. He remembered how they remembered how he taught them how to fight and how to stand. Sometimes folk get up on their feet and they forget the very ones that helped them when they ain't had no feet. Couldn't stand on their own. We got to get back to commitment. We got to get back to covenant. 
look at your neighbor and say, the pastor ain't mad. He just preaching hard. Because he will give you the shirt off his back. Come on, how many know I'll give you the shirt off my back? But I love you enough to stir your fire. Huh? I love you enough to tell you the truth. And if you be honest with the Holy Ghost, you know I'm talking to you. Did you hear what I just said? If you be honest with the Holy Ghost, you know he's talking to you. Let a man examine himself. You ought to be examining yourself while I'm talking and not have an attitude on top of you. Huh? Looking kind of mean. Looking kind of nonchalant. I ain't studying you. I got to preach what God has given me because I did not come out here with this on my mind. I didn't come out here purposely to try to whoop you into line. It's not me know how. Every now and then God got to talk to you. Sometimes when you're not listening, he got to really get bold with you. Let's get back to being committed. Don't go into 22 with the same attitude you might have had in 19. And as I'll say, people, people, people pastors always at me. He said, you say that to the people? Yeah. I don't want nobody around me. They don't feel like they should be here. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Don't struggle to come to God of deliverance. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't be struggling to come to God of deliverance. Come because you love being in the presence. Come because you believe the word of God is being preached. Come because you know you've got a clean vessel that's pouring out. Hey Amen. I wouldn't drink out of a dirty cup no how. But I, I, I'm saying you got to know what you have. Just like marriage. Sometimes the wife acting crazy. Sometimes the husband acting crazy. But because you're committed. Yeah. 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 Our neighbor looking at me. Our visitor looking at me like, wow, did I come to the right church? I hope you think you came to the right church today. <laughs> shout all you want, but after we finish shout, let's get right with God. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, we don't mind you shouting, but let's just get right with God. Look, let me, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Ain't none of us perfect. That's why his mercies are renewed every morning. Because every day you wear it out. Every day I wear it out. And guess what? He give me that brand new mercy. Somebody say brand new mercy. Get back to commitment. And you leaders, I don't need a whole bunch. I just need somebody that's going to make the ministry look good. Brag on the ministry. Put it on Facebook. God has given us all kinds of avenues to catapult. I have talked to some pastors. He, they say the same thing I say. Man, they in there talking about pancakes and going to bed, dancing, all that. And I tell them, put the service on their web page. It's like they're embarrassed to talk th that they belong to the church. Come on. I, it ain't just God of deliverance. There's other pastors I talk to. I said, listen, we got all kinds of avenues to get the ministry out there because nobody going around handing out tracks no more. <laughs> huh? And yet God provides a venue to catapult ministry, and when you check that page, you don't see no service on there at all. Why? You afraid to identify? You afraid to say that you belong? Let me tell you something. A wise man delivered a city, but nobody remembered him. What are you talking about? I'm in the word. Huh? I'm in the word. Here's a wise man that brought deliverance to your life, but you're too ashamed to brag on him. Something wrong with that picture. Something wrong with it, and I'm, I'm here to declare it. That is wrong. Whew. I, I, this, all this stuff going on on Facebook. I don't know how many members going to come after that. <laughs> I'm glad to see him raw because, boy, I done made up my mind. Up oh, the church down the street. <laughs> huh? You got to want to live right. 
Church, he saved us from being a sinner. Come on, how many believe he saved us from being a sinner? He saved us. Which means what? There ought to be a process of change. You know, you look at the deacon who used to be a smoker. Now he doesn't smoke anymore. Huh? Used to be a drinker, peeing in the flowers. Come on, somebody. Now he's a deacon of the church. Huh? Here, Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Thought he was a good person. But came to realize once he came to God of deliverance, he was still a sinner. Now he strives to be what God has called him to be. Come on, somebody. Used to be a whoremonger. But now, amen, a man of God. Come on, somebody. You got to realize there ain't no age bracket in here. Amen. You got to realize that God has called us for change. He wants to show the world what you used to be, but now look at what you are today. I used to be a whoremonger. Huh? Chase women. Come on, somebody. Most men do. Come on, somebody. But guess what? He came into my life one day and changed my whole perspective of things. Now all you beautiful women ain't nothing but decorated dirt. That stop a whole lot of hormones from flying out of order. When you get a revelation that God will give you. And that's what he gave me. If you really want to be delivered, God will deliver you. But if you want to play games, you'll stay in that same circle all your life. And then meet him one day and he said, your name don't appear. Oh, I don't want to hear that in my life. I wish I could talk to somebody. I wish I could break the yoke today. I don't want to be found after trying all this time. And then he said, I never knew you. But God, we sung in your name, but I never knew you. We cast out devils in your name, but I never knew you. We preached and folk fell out, but I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. I don't want that be that my appetite. I don't want to be, as much as I, I try to fight against the temptations of sin, to get into heaven and say, my name ain't written. Oh, I wish I, I wish I could get you to see the revelation of heaven. Because you ain't going to be down here forever. Pastor Barnes' uh, daughter, granddaughter, gone. 32 years, gone. Don't tell me about age brackets. Son, 28, gone. Son five, gone. You don't know what time you're going to be in heaven. And everybody's going to heaven. Don't let nobody fool you. Everybody going to heaven. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Only difference is everybody ain't going to stay up there. That's the part you need to understand. Oh, everybody going to heaven. Yeah, you right until they pull them books out. And when your name don't appear, you don't need no uh, parachute. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible says of how the angels came and, 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 and took up Lazarus. But when the king died, you don't hear nothing about no angel showing up to fly him nowhere. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need no angel to fall. <laughs> so I hope that something I said today will cause you to deepen your commitment. Stop, stop just going with the motion. If God called you, if God called you, I'm talking about man called you. Man called you, you ain't going to last long. Because the moment that man make you mad, you out. You done. You a turnover. But if God called you, you can stand and fight. Is there still some fight? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, is there still some fight in you? Can you still fight? Can you still fight a good fight of faith? Can you still hold on when things look like they're going crazy? Can you still fight your way out? Can you stand your ground? 
Can you hold up the bloodstained banner? Can you still believe God when it don't look like you got no tangible evidence to back up what you believe? I want to talk to somebody that's a warrior in the kingdom. I want to talk to somebody that has not given up the fight. Things might have gone wrong, but you still got a fight in you. Am I talking to anybody? Am I talking to myself? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Do you still got a fight left in you? Oh, I've been knocked down, but the fight inside of me made me get back up. Anybody had to get back up? Do you still got a fight left? I don't like what the preacher said today, but there's a fight in me. I refuse to let my carnal mind overwhelm my spiritual mind because I know what I heard was right. I heard the Holy Ghost. He was talking to me today. Let's get back to holiness. It's not a denomination. Don't let nobody fool you. What's your denomination? Born again. What church you belong to? Born again. What do you believe? You must be born again. Well, what do you do when you see somebody who falls into sin? My job is to be a breach repairer. Lead you back to the bloodstained banner. But if you persist to continue in sin, my Bible commands me to leave you alone. I will not sit and have fellowship with a homemonger. Because let me tell you something, they'll have you hoeing before you get them sanctified. I wish I could talk to somebody. You ain't that strong. You ain't that powerful. You're not that anointed. That's why he said, flee. I wish I could talk to somebody. Look at your neighbor and said, I wish he could talk to somebody. Pastor, you're walking heavy this morning. Well, I didn't have this message on my mind. God is telling us, sharpen up your tools. You're going to be a leader, be a real leader. Show the people how they're supposed to serve. Show the people what level of commitment it takes to be a leader. Huh? But somebody following your example. Somebody's watching how you serve the Lord. And you may be giving them sanction that you don't have to be that committed. People try to get close to me when they come join the church, try to get close. They end up leaving sometimes. Why? Because they're trying to hang out with something they can't hang with. I wish I could talk to somebody. Because I'm talking about the Lord all day. I'm living the life that I preach when you don't see me. Huh? Come on, somebody. I'm everybody's friend, but I ain't your friend. I'm your pastor. I'm your apostle. Somebody say Pa pastor, pastor don't never call me. I ain't tell you to join so I can call you. You need a friend? Get somebody in the pews and y'all have a fellowship. Boy, that sound kind of rugged, don't it? But guess what? When you call me and you need me, I'm going to be right there. You ain't got to invite me to nothing. That's all right. I'll still love you. But the Bible says call on the elders. I, I I, I, I be wondering when somebody's sick, they call me. I, I'm wondering, who can I call? Come on. See, they, uh oh, got quiet. Now I'm getting them, them looks again. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, don't be afraid of their looks. Because I'm going to make your forehead harder than theirs. Calling yourself ministers and calling yourself, they got titles. But when somebody's sick, uh, uh, 
Let me pull the Ferris wheel around. Let me see who name it stops at. That's foolishness. Woo, I was doing good, but look at these. Woo, I'm glad I don't have my glasses on. I can feel it in the spirit. I can't see your face. But God called you. Don't you ever forget. God called you. And it's to him you ought to be faithful. I hear a song in my spirit. I, you know me, I can't get it all together. But I know it's a word in there that says something about, mm hmm mm hmm She's anointed. She's going to figure it out. You know, I, I mess with Robin like that because Apostle Thomas's secretary would get his written information to be able to put it in his books. But if anybody ever saw how Apostle wrote, you knew that that woman had the Holy Ghost in a double portion. Because you could never read his writing and figure it out. And I would just be in awe when she would get his information and knows exactly what all them designs in that paper were. She converted it to English. <laughs> but because of their commitment, they're now the pastors of DCA. Why? Because they stuck with the man of God. And whatever he needed, they were faithful in their call. You don't know what tomorrow God has for you. You don't really know. You don't know maybe he's got a church sitting waiting on you. Might have a ministry waiting on you. But you first have to be committed in the small thing. Stop trying to reach for greatness and you're not faithful in the small. Because guess what? When you do it, you're going to produce after what you've sown. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Huh? Because your tomorrow going to be greater than yours today. And I told the prisoners today, I said, listen here. I said, when Jesus was getting ready to be, be placed in the womb of Mary, I told him, you know what God is trying to tell us? There's a king inside of you. Huh? This message is not to discourage you or cause you defeat. This message is to make, shake you to understand who you are. You're a king. You're a queen. And you ought to act like it. Huh? My original message, sit down because y'all making me think I'm preaching. Huh? My message today was entitled, Keep Moving Forward. I may not preach it today because I'm just about done. Because I, I came out with the understanding that I wanted to focus in on the lad in that story. Here's a young man. Huh? 13 years old. Willing to follow a crowd whose mother sent him to follow after Jesus. Now you know that's tremendous, tremendous discipline for a young boy who had five loaves and two fish. And guess what? I, I, I'm going to just give you the outline because I, I, I'm not going to preach it next Sunday because it was supposed to be meant for today. But anyway, you got to see something in this story, and it's found in John chapter 6, verse 1. I'm not going to go through all of it. I'm just going to tell it to you because I believe the message that was needed to be delivered has all been done. But when you understand and see the word lad, it means, amen, that he was in the age bracket of 13 to 18. But the thing is, is that my question was not so much focusing in on the disciple and focusing so much on what Jesus was saying, because the Bible says he already knew what he would do. And here's a young lad who was willing to climb mountains and go distances to follow Jesus. My my imagination, come on in. My imagination is this, is that the mother and the son must have been struggling in their finance. What do you mean, preacher? Where do you get that all from? 
Stop just reading scripture on the surface. Stay there a while and meditate because the Holy Ghost want to give you something deeper inside the scripture. Huh? And when I sat there and I began to ponder thought, the Bible, it shows me how that the mother sent him off. Maybe she was sick in her body and couldn't travel, but she gave him enough. Huh? And when they ran out of food, the, guess where the source came? It came from the little. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't despise your little. Because when you present it to Christ, you'll have more than enough. So I sat there and I began to ponder. And they said to Jesus, we don't have anything but, you know, these two fish and, and five loaves. And, and Jesus said, well, give it to me. Now understand that they had 5,000 men. And in Jewish custom, the men would eat first. So that means even though this lad surrendered, and that's a miracle right there. Young people don't want to give you nothing. They'll receive everything you got, but they'll try to keep their own. Can I get an amen? amen? But this young man was willing to give his all. Because he, the Bible says in the beginning, in the ch first chapter, I mean the first verse, or second verse, that they saw the miracles of Jesus. This young lad had enough gunk to believe that what he had seen could happen for him. And he turns around and gives the disciples his food. Now, the thing that puzzled me was, is that when he gave his food, he couldn't eat. With the rest. Because the men had to eat first. Now you know God is an awesome God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't care who get what they get first. What God has for you, he has for you. You ought to praise God right there. What God has for you, he has for you. Huh? But listen to this, listen to this. So he gives up what he had, then had to take the back seat and watch others have what he thought he should have. But he kept moving forward. Look at your neighbor and say, but you got to keep on moving forward. When things don't go your way, you got to keep on moving forward. When you don't get what you think you ought to deserve, you got to keep on moving forward. My thing is, if a lad that young could be disciplined to follow Christ, how about you and I? He kept moving forward. Despite what he saw, despite what he believed he deserved, he kept moving forward. Let's move forward and I'm done. After everybody ate, he ate. And the Bible says, and they were full. But this is the part, this is the part that I, I hear in the Holy Ghost. Is that this young lad gave up what he needed most. But the Bible says, now, am I right? He said that he knew what he would do. Jesus knew what he would do. Jesus knew that young lad had a need. And when they gathered up 12 basket full, he went home with more than enough. Why? Because he kept moving forward. Look at somebody and say, stop letting obstacles make you stop your forward motion. Jesus knows what he's going to do with your life. You can stop the tape. Tell three people around you, Jesus knows what he's going to do with your life.